Hi everyone and welcome back to the garden. So I kind of have some sad news today, which I shared Monday on my Instagram stories. Uh, I was going through doing some additional cleanup after, you know, the garden tour was released this past weekend. And on Monday, I needed to prune some roses that had got kind of leggy. And I was walking through the garden and I started pruning the first one, which is Tranquility by David Austin. It is one of the first roses um, that I put in my garden and I noticed some odd growth on it. So I'm, I am like 90% sure that I also had this in the spring. I can't remember exactly, but I remember seeing this and it's not bloomed great this year. So I noticed it immediately and I was like, this looks diseased. And then I got to looking online and I was like, this is probably rose rosette. So I've kind of told my story before about roses. Uh, there were like three rose bushes at our house when we moved in and they were awful. Um, I removed them very promptly along with a lot of the other shrubs and I swore never to plant roses in my garden again because those looked so terrible uh, and I didn't want to deal with them. Well, I kind of fell in love with David Austin roses and then I added uh, several of those to my garden in 2020, uh, right when the pandemic hit, I'd ordered a bunch over winter and that was my first roses that I'd put in the garden really. Uh, I think I had one other one called At Last by Proven Winners before that time, but my big foray into all of these roses was uh, that first order from David Alston. So after that, I was kind of hooked and I found some really beautiful varieties that I love. Uh, Tranquility, which is the one that I noticed is diseased, was not one of my favorites. I've mentioned that on this channel before. Uh, it's a white rose. It's really beautiful, but white roses don't tend to hold up very good to overhead watering. And there's a sprinkler system in my backyard and it kind of gets hit at least three times a week. Uh, and those blooms just don't do great. But I noticed this year in general that Tranquility was not performing well. It was, wasn't blooming hardly at all when it would put, set buds. And then I had this weird growth show up, which I'll show you on the screen. Uh, so I had come out here and I'd been deadheading some dahlias and then I immediately went to this rose because it's one I just didn't get to trimming before the garden tour and it had some like extra long growth on it. And then I trimmed that growth that I saw off and then I was like, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And so I immediately uh, stopped what I was doing and went inside and cleaned my pruners and I just called it a night. I didn't do anything else in the garden uh, because I didn't want to spread anything. And so just for some background, rose rosette is an incurable disease that is transferred by aerified mites. These mites are the same type of mites that cause the maple bladder gall, which I've mentioned my maple has. Uh, they are very difficult to get rid of. They are like a fourth of the size of a spider mite, which is almost not able to be seen by the human eye and aerified mites can be seen by the human eye. You can barely see them with a like 10 times magnification a lens, so they have to be looked at under a lens. So from my understanding, these mites don't cause the disease, but they carry the disease from plant to plant. Uh, these aren't mites that um, fly, they just crawl, but they're light enough to be blown on the wind. Um, and so, like I said, they're just really difficult to get rid of. A spray that treats spider mites may not treat aerified mites, and regardless of whether you treat the plant or not, if it's been infected, there's no curing it. Um, so some people will leave the plant in their garden and just trim off that odd growth. Uh, however, the best method is to actually take that plant out and completely remove it because the risk of keeping it in your garden is that it might spread to your other roses. And this is a disease that will most likely eventually kill that rose. Um, and so to avoid it spreading to the rest of my roses, I waited a day and then I came out here and I removed it. Uh, I will show you a video of the removal process. Uh, I did like a time lapse and so I'll show it on the screen, but essentially uh, my method was to wrap some twine around the rose and tie it as tight as I could to kind of get it, you know, in a columnar shape and then throw a black trash bag over it. Um, the black trash bag's purpose primarily is to prevent the mites and the leaves from falling off as you're trying to remove it because those things can transmit disease to your other roses. And I have this beautiful David Austin right next to me here. It's not currently in bloom, uh, but I'm concerned because it's so close. It's the Eustacea bi, 
uh, and it's one of my new favorite roses, and I went over it in the garden tour. But after I put the plastic bag over it, I cut it off with loppers at the ground level, uh, and then tied up that bag and put it in the trash can. This is not something you want to compost. At minimum, you should burn it. But throwing it in the trash and getting rid of it away from your property is the best method of disposal. And after I did that, I dug up the root ball. And so this disease does not live in the soil. However, it could be in the roots that were left around in the soil. So because I didn't want to dig a huge hole and because they might still be roots in the ground, I'm not replanting that space with another rose. Um, it is possible to do that, but generally they ask you to wait for those roots to die off to make sure there's not going to be any suckering after a rose is removed, because sometimes that can happen. So for me, I'm not replanting another rose in that location. And for me, I wouldn't recommend anyone else replant in that location, maybe except for a couple of years later, if you were willing to do that. Um, so that immediately opened up a spot in my garden for another plant. Uh, I've kind of been racking my mind over what I might put there. Uh, I would kind of like some red foliage in that location because there's not really any. Uh, I will take you up and show you in just a minute, but I think I found what I might put there after I just set it in the ground a moment ago. So just as a little more background on Rose Rosette, uh, there's a whole website dedicated to tracking this disease. It's been around for quite some time. Like I said, there's not a cure, and the website is roserosette.org. It's set out by the USDA uh, to track the disease, and you can actually submit photos of what you think might be rose rosette and you'll get someone that comes back uh, after the review of it to let you know if that's most likely what it is. Uh, so I have not heard back yet. I did submit those pictures, but out of an abundance of caution, I removed that rose uh, because based on all the photos that I've seen, um, it was pretty much probably rose rosette. And then they also have a map on roserosette.org that you can look and see if it's pretty common in your area. So it seems to be really pretty common in the Midwest specifically. Uh, the southern states don't, have, don't seem to have as much of an issue with it, um, and it might just be how the mites are transmitted um, that carry the disease. So what does this mean for my garden? Uh, it means that I can continue planting roses, um, I might have other infected roses that I may have to remove in the future. It means I'm going to have to take very cautious um, care of how I prune my roses. Uh, after I removed the rose that I showed you in the video, um, I doused alcohol on all the tools they used, even the shovel. 70% uh, rubbing isopropyl alcohol or some other uh, disinfectant is what you want to clean your tools with. So I cleaned both the loppers and the shovel. Um, and then I, you also have the option of like spraying the ground. You want to pick up as many leaves as you can that were dropped. You do not want to spray the area or blow the area off with a uh, leaf blower because the mites can be transmitted by air and just on the wind. And if you go blowing leaves out of your garden bed to get the, the rose, leftover rose leaves out, you're very likely to spray it all around your garden. So it's not recommended to blow the leaves out I just kind of left it as is. Now, after it's removed, you have the option of like spraying the ground uh, with a chemical, organic or inorganic, and maybe the surrounding roses. Uh, that is really up to you. It is really difficult to find a um, chemical that will treat er aerified mites uh, that's not really damaging to other insects. And so that's just something you have to consider if you're going to do that or not, um, but it can be recommended by Finthrin, which is in a lot of uh, over-the-counter like garden chemicals is one of the mechanisms of treating it, but by is also very damaging to pollinators and other beneficial insects. So if you choose to spray a chemical, you just want to do it, you know, after the pollinators have gone to bed uh, and very carefully and precise, not on any blooms, um, that type thing. So just in the location that the rose was in, um, because these, like I mentioned, these mites don't fly. They fly on the wind, but they're primarily crawlers and they can crawl from plant to plant. So some ways to prevent this disease is obviously don't plant roses next to each other uh, that 
one might get a disease and then if it gets rose rosette, most likely the one next to it's probably going to have it if their branches are touching at all. So appropriate spacing. Uh, if you're going for a cottage type feel like I am, that may not always be uh, an option, but just realize that's that's a possibility. And then you have to carefully clean your pruners after every uh, rose pruning. And so this isn't something that's going to go and damage other plants in your garden. It's limited specifically to roses. Now the aerified mites might damage other parts of your garden, but rose rosette is a specific disease to roses, and that's why it's called rose rosette. Truth is, I am really nervous about um, next year about what I might see next year because I did go around and trim all of my roses uh, a lot of them right before the garden tour uh, I didn't get to the one that I found this damage on um, and I pruned them all in the spring without cleaning my pruners and so I'm gonna have to keep an eye out for this now just because your rose has rose rose rosette doesn't mean it's going to experience these symptoms. So the primary symptom is like a witch brooming effect, which is when the internodes of the leaves get really short. short. Um, the growth and the leaves on that new growth becomes really kind of gnarled. It can cause extreme thorniness in that area of growth as well, which is something that I didn't notice quite so much. Uh, but there's also sometimes yellowing on the rose. There's a whole list of symptoms that rose rosette Dot org lays out that your rose may or may not exhibit if it has rose rosette. And because this disease is so damaging, the rose will eventually die from it. They expect, you know, in a few years will be its lifespan. Now, am I going to be planting other roses in my garden? Yes, I actually have three coming uh, at the end of this month, and then I have another one waiting to be planted, which I'll share in another video. I'm not going to plant those roses anywhere around this location uh, just because I'm super concerned about it spreading. And I certainly don't want to put a new rose in the ground uh, that might exhibit this issue. Now, proximity, I mentioned planting roses next to each other. You know, you just don't want their limbs necessarily touching or their branches or leaves or anything. But you can still plant them pretty closely. Uh, just because the plant is diseased, if mites are not present and you're practicing proper pruning habits, uh, you're not really going to transmit this disease. So it's, you know, transmitted by direct, you know, sap to sap contact when you're pruning or the mites have in transition it to another rose. So if you have any more questions about the disease, roserosette.org is an excellent resource. Obviously, I've watched lots of videos online, read lots of material since then, so I know how to deal with it. Uh, and I'm still waiting back to hear on my specific case, but based on everything I've read, all the pictures I've seen, I'm pretty positive my case was rosette. And if it wasn't, uh, that rose still had something very odd going on that I didn't want to potentially infect my other roses or um, cause other disease issues since it just was not performing great and had that weird growth on it. So let me show you what idea I have of replacing the rose in this specific spot because we're starting to get um, or we'll be entering into anyway some cooler weather soon. So it's almost planting season here again. I try not to plant a whole lot in the summer because it's just super hot and hard to keep water on things. But this time of year is when I start getting things in the ground so they can settle in before fall because sometimes we transition from hot to cold real fast uh, and then you want those things to settle in, get their roots situated uh, to make it through winter well. So primarily what I'm looking at probably putting in this location is this Blue Shadows Father Gilla. Uh, I thought I might want some red foliage here. I've kind of looked around at what red options there are, and there's not a whole lot of options that might fit great here. That is a shrub. Um, there is, I am getting another shrub coming in called uh, Wine and Spirits Wygela, which has really dark foliage. It's not necessarily red, but I think this blue is really lovely. Let me know what you think uh, in this location. But this area lines up almost perfectly with the stairs coming down from the patio and the pergola and so we'll be looking at it directly when we come down the steps it's kind of going to be a focal point and i just really think this father gill is going to look pretty good right here but if you have any other ideas uh, that will survive well and do well in zone six let me know because right now this one's giving me everything i'm wanting for this spot but as we enter planting season there are a ton more options available that I can go out and find something if anyone has a good recommendation. 
So, although the news today wasn't great, uh, I wanted to bring this to you anyway because it's not something that everyone knows about. And just in your own garden, just be on the lookout, be vigilant about your pruning practices. I haven't done the best job of doing that. Uh, and I'm gonna have to start just so I don't transmit disease from rose to rose. But either way, this isn't the end of roses in my garden, hopefully. Um, if every rose in my garden gets it and has to be removed, we'll remove all of them and then wait a few years and try again. But for now, we're just gonna see what happens, wait and see, be diligent about our pruning practices um, and just take a wait and see approach. Thank you guys for joining me. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, everyone. Bye.